what was the eligibility criteria for it? I mean, minimum CGPA involved or not, or anything like that. So, uh, so I think the minimum CGPA involved was six point five and above. How was the interview experience? Was it too tough, or it was okay? Kind of questions at the rounds. If I were to suggest, uh, I would suggest that. Hey guys, this is Mehak from Coding Blocks, and today we have with us Vardhan, and he's going to share his success story of uh, hashed in by Deloitte. So, hi Vardhan, congratulations, and thank you so much for joining us today. Hi Mehak, thank you for giving me this opportunity. If I were just to start with my introduction, hello everybody, my name is Vardhan, and I uh, belong to the uh, town of uh, Temples and Sweets, which is Mathura. And I basically did my senior secondary schooling from here, and right now I'm in my final year. Doing uh, B Tech from Computer Science in G L Bajaj Group of Institutions, Mathura, and uh, uh, most recently, I would say that I I have been working on machine learning and artificial intelligence, and as of this on campus season, uh, uh, I have received a pre pre placement offer for both intern and full time as a software engineer at Hashden by Deloitte. Yeah. Great. So, um, if talking about Hashden by Deloitte, so was it on campus or off campus? Yeah, so it was an on-campus opportunity as part of our uh, placement activities. Okay, great. So, what was the eligibility criteria for it? I mean, minimum CGPA involved or not, or anything like so, that. So, uh, so I think the minimum CGPA involved was six point five and above, and uh, there was no there was no any hard and fast rule. And I think the tenth okay. and twelfth percentages were also quite lenient. I think they were uh, sixty five to seventy percent only. They were. They were. I don't. I don't think anybody who got left uh, due to the shortlisting criteria. It was quite lenient. You just Great. didn't have to. Yeah, there was one rule that you didn't have to have any backlog. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, talking about the interview now, how was the interview experience? Was it too tough, or it was okay? Kind of questions at the rounds. Uh, so basically, uh, first we had an online assessment. It was a coding test, which was okay. uh, which took place on the Codality platform. Uh, which uh, where usually that these kind of tests happen, and uh, okay. it was quite a. I would say it was not a difficult test. Anyone who has done uh, some decent practice on lead code, I would say, uh, they mm. they would surely be able to recognize the problem, and you know, uh, they would be familiar with it. The questions were obviously new, but they were already based on questions that you would have solved if you had spent some time on these platforms like okay. lead code or interview bit. So I would say it was easy to medium level. And hmm. after that, uh, after clearing that online test, we had basically uh, three interviews. Uh, one was your standard DSA interview, the first one. It was a purely technical DSA interview. So in that interview, uh, I was asked basically DSA questions, and one of the questions I remember was um, it was a graph questions. It's called number of islands. It's a very famous question on lead code. So I was asked that, and uh, I was supposed to. Uh, the uh, write the code there and there only. I think it was on Google Docs. So I was supposed to write the code there and then, and then explain the time complexity and why I chose that particular algorithm to solve that particular question. And mm -hmm. after that, as I had written in my resume that uh, you know I have I have preference in Python. So then some questions on Python mm -hmm. followed, like uh, what are lambda expressions or you know uh, some further more expressions like uh, why machine learning in python uh, why artificial intelligence mm -hmm. all of this was mentioned on my resume and after that there was one more dsa question it was a very simple question it was just that you have to find the common characters between two strings so uh, that that was the the first round that concluded the first round and i got the results uh, the the following evening only and then we had a second round so this was a design round it wasn't that much DSA based. It was a design round. So the interview started with again with, with a simple introduction, and then some questions on uh, computer networks, DBMS, and OS followed. Uh, pretty standard mm -hmm. stuff, uh, like okay. uh, how do ports work and asset properties and all that. And after that, we had a, a design question in which I was asked to design a tic-tac-toe game, uh, mm -hmm. and I was given I think uh, 35 to 40 minutes to design it. Uh, okay. And uh, it was it was just a pretty standard, uh, you know, uh, straightforward interview. So I, I I wrote my code, and then after 30 to 45 minutes, we you know we executed the code, and then uh, we uh, tested the code on various test cases, all the edge cases, 
and um, that's it uh, the me and interview we just uh, interviewer we just you know uh, played against ourselves only that whether the whether the uh, game that i have developed is working fine or not so we tried to cover all corner cases like in tic tac toe like in uh, how many ways you can win and all that so that was pretty much everything about the design round and okay. uh, we the coding interview that you mentioned so could you just highlight the you know maybe topics if you don't remember the questions exactly the topics yeah. from which the questions were asked um so in the coding interview like i said uh, there was a question number of islands it's a graph question so hmm. uh, graphs was asked uh, it was a basic uh, depth first search and breadth first search topic and then okay. the other question was uh, find common characters between two strings so it's a simple ad hoc question there is no specific hmm. algorithms required but if i were to suggest uh, i would suggest that uh, prepare your uh, dynamic programming and graph because uh, these are uh, you know one of the most uh, uh, most asked topics uh, the most you know ho- most hot topics so i would say dp and graph they are the most important they should okay. be at the top of your list okay okay so to the next round yeah so we got the results uh, the following evening only and the final round was a fitment round or it was an hr round so in mm-hmm. the hr round it was a pretty it was a pretty simple round it was more of a conversation i would say than an than an interview it just lasted for i guess about 15 minutes and uh, i was asked a question like why hashden um uh, so uh, it's always a i would suggest it's always a good uh, idea to you know read up about the company before you're sitting for the hr interview so you can yes. you know talk about the company so the hr can get a more strong impression okay that this candidate is genuinely interested he knows our values our mission our you know uh, core ethics so, so how did uh, you answer this question i mean this is a little tricky question and some people yeah. i don't know i believe some people are not able to you know answer it properly ki why this company actually uh so i what i did was i basically read up the history of hashden so as yeah. many people know that hashden originally started as a startup and then it was acquired by deloitte Uh, yeah. until recently so i just um, you know i i framed my uh, you know answer to the question that i have always been interested from hashden from since the beginning and i had been following hashden for quite some years it was uh, actually one of my dream companies that i was hoping to crack so uh, i already knew uh, what services it offered and it which sector it operated so when i you know um, showcased my uh, knowledge about the company and my interest and i think that was that that was the tie breaker so just read up about the company for whichever company you're sitting in and only you know apply if you have genuine interest don't you know don't don't take the hr round lightly so i had the genuine interest so that's why i think the odds worked in my favor yeah nice okay so this was about the interview the preparation yeah. if you come on to it so how did you yeah. prepare yourself for these interviews so uh, for the preparation i would say that uh, i chose to do lead code uh for my dsa preparation so initially i i didn't know because dsa is such a you know it's a very intimidating topic for for a you know for beginners so i did a course from coding blocks only it was an interview preparation course uh it was dsa centric so i did that course and along with that course i started using interview bit website so first i did interview bit then i switched on to lead code so i used to watch some videos uh, the all whatever the videos that were provided in the course and then i used to go on to the interview bit platform and and just do the respective questions like if i have studied dynamic programming then i would go to that section and i would just try my hand at all the dynamic programming uh, problems so like i uh, likewise i finished the course and interview bit uh, you know simultaneously and after yeah. that whichever um, topic i felt weak in like i like uh, my dp was i think a little bit shaky uh, the recursion the the recursion the memoization part mm-hmm. so for that i went on to lead code and from then only from then from since then i have been practicing lead code only uh, for dsa i i would say that lead code medium lead code medium questions are more than enough uh, you know the interviews uh, interviewers usually, usually don't ask lead code hard questions they're only lead code medium questions and uh, mostly i would say that focus on your basics that people mostly ignore their uh, c and dbms and you know these os concepts i used to do the course and interview bit simultaneously so for example mm-hmm. if i studied a topic of stack so i just watched mm-hmm. all the videos of stack which were provided in my course and then i went on to the interview bit website and then mm-hmm. i did all the respective questions of stack so I, i i followed a similar procedure for every every topic stack q heap uh, bst uh, dp graph and then uh, finally when i had completed the course uh, whichever topic i felt that i was still a shaky i was still a bit shaky 
so then i switched on to lead code to just uh, practice that topic exhaustively so i think lead code is uh, i would say lead code and interview bit are more than enough to crack uh, your dream company that surely worked for me yeah great so any last you know interview tips or the resume tips that you would like to give to our you know audience Uh, so the first tip would be that uh, for like i said for whichever company you're sitting in make sure that you have done your research because that shows your genuine interest like i had follow that company look for in which tech stacks it's you know it's it's working and what innovations it's been doing and mm-hmm. the other tip would be regarding your resume uh, just keep it one page uh, because the interviewers usually have like 30 to 40 seconds to shortlist your resume don't keep it more than yeah. one page and uh, coming to your dsa like um, uh, Yeah, some people say that you know competitive programming is a must, and you know, and there's a thin line between competitive programming and DSA. So only do competitive programming if you really like it for the sport. It is, it's a mind sport. So uh, some people like uh, get stuck in competitive programming and then then they get frustrated very easily. So even if you do a decent level of DSA from lead code or interview bit, I, I guarantee you that's enough for cracking you know any good product based company. and if you want to do competitive programming then do it for the spirit obviously it increases your problem solving skills but take it as a sport and uh, apart from that i would just say that uh, be consistent just give two uh, two or three hours every day you don't need to give five six hours just give two or three hours every day but be consistent and give lead code weekly and biweekly contests on a daily basis so you know you get a feeling of how to you know solve three questions in 90 minutes like i was given three questions to solve in 90 minutes so to you know to get in the hang of that just start giving lead code contests or any any contests you like it would be code chef or anything you like so uh, that's it and just uh, keep your communication skills crisp and clear um, uh, like make sure that your thoughts are getting uh, as clearly as the as clearly as you can you know across to the interviewer because at the end uh, your solution matters but how you present that solution that also matters a lot start from yes. the brute force solution mm-hmm. and then move your way up optimizing it one 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 step at a time and then finally end it wrap the discussion up with some time and space complexity discussion so i think that that that's all that's needed now that was an amazing advice so thank you so much vardhan for joining us today and sharing a success story experience with us i believe that would really help people so thank you so much thank you thank you so much for giving me the opportunity thank you and guys you can just subscribe to our channel for more such success story videos thank you